I hope you're ready for some ill logic. Last time we went over a week 5 match against Tony and his mighty mill tanks. Please go check out that video first if you've not done so already. So we went over the team builder, which didn't really matter too much for the battle because, spoiler alert, we played our worst draft league game to date in a 2 0 loss to the mill tanks, dropping us below 500 for the first time since my very first draft season. This time we're squaring up against Steve Chuck and his 0 and 5 at Waterdeep Boba Fett's timestamps in the description. If my doing poorly isn't the biggest surprise of the season, it'd be Steve not even winning a game yet. Steve is always a big threat, but this season, it's been rough for him. He has the threats, but together, well, let's just go over his squad. Raikou at the top, followed by Swoobat, Darmanita, and Galar Zen mode only. Excadrill is his first pick, Togekiss, Oranguru, Combuskin, Conkeldur, Slowbro, and Gigalith. Lots of big attackers, not too terribly much in the way of defense or special offense. It's about impossible to wall all of Drill, Conk, and Darm G, but past that it's kind of all over the place. It seems like he's got to bring the same few mods all the time, and that gets predictable, even for the ones we don't expect. There's plenty we can do about. Well... I hope. As, as you could tell from last week, we're not doing so hot ourselves. Not only are we starting to get down to the same territory as Steve, but we're playing about that badly, too. We're still in the positives as far as differential, which is pretty funny, but it sure is feeling like prep and two Arctivish games are carrying that entirely. We're going to need to step up the gameplay to keep up with not only my own standards, but the league as a whole. And that's pretty tough to do, too, against such a good coach. He may be 0-5, but this is someone that we lost to just last regular draft season. Do not want to make that 0-2 in regular draft in the last two seasons. So how does that improve again? It does still start at prop and expectations, so let's talk about it. Swoobat isn't real. Aranguru isn't actually good at all, just a slow special attacker that can trick room. That's probably something to think about, particularly the whole trick room aspect, but I'm not the most concerned about that, or Aranguru in general. The rest could come, but Combuskin is a bit gimmicky overall, a theme of Steve's team of individual gimmicks, and I do have at least one solid counter in Latias to SD Combuskin. Tangela can come as tanky for a specially vicious rend and Zero Aura and Sapu Bulu, but I think we've got a few ways around it, and some choices on the team intended to be able to work against my boy are still going to be useful in other situations. Finally, Raikou is fast, but not too terribly fast in struggles with Miley against Zero Aura. Can only Volt Switch on Latias, and only extra sensory the Nino King. That means we're anticipating the remaining six, starting with Slowbro as the psychic type out of his three, as he's got as well as the physical defender that can still take fishes instead of Tangela. Also a nice answer to Kambalian and Latias among others, as well as a teleporter to bring out the actual good threats and threaten things such as statuses like Skull Burn. Giggles should probably come to facilitate Excadrill Sand, assuming it still carries a way to hit Latias with Sand Rush. That could go either way for Excadrill, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but Giggleth itself is a veritable tank that can soak up Latias and Obscune hits, among others, while providing other support options like Rocks and maybe even Explosion for the sweet free switch. Tokus has a great typing, the ability to do so many different things between flinching down with Scarf or Nast plotting off or serving Cleric duties, providing a lot of scary options. Of course, the top three are his physical attacker, starting with Darm. Band and Scarf are scary even without Gorilla Tactics, and I actually have to be mindful of the speed boost he gets after transformation up to base 135. Well, that's great coverage on him, too, between Ice, Fire, Ground, and Fighting to hit my whole team. Excadrill is obviously a threat, as with Moldbreaker, my Ground answers are weak to Iron Head or our Cramorant. General tankiness definitely helps, but Ground and Steel are actually really solid typing against me. As before the Sand Rush or Moldbreaker argument, it's actually a little bit tough. The two mons that he can hit with Moldbreaker are already naturally faster than him, so I do kind of anticipate that Saint Rush, hence why the Gigalith, I think, makes a lot of sense for him. Finally, Conkelder is ridiculously strong with stab fighting moves, especially Mock Punch, priority, and the coverage, including Knock Off, Ice Punch, maybe even Facade with Guts. Tough, but not impossible. For my end, Flareon has no place here, not walling anything in particular with its poor Fizz Def, and those it does outspeed do not care. Kramer could have been funny as it resists most of the typings as physical mons have between fire, ground, steel, and fighting, but just doesn't have the physical defense to follow through on that, nor the power behind its surf to go something like Scarf. Obscune does hit hard and outspeeds most of his team, but Conk itself is a hard stop with Mach Punch, not to mention Kiss, not to mention RSV Raikou, it's not a great time overall. Rotom has some use, but I really don't like gambling on Excadrill being Sand Rush and then maybe missing on a burn, or burning a Conk of his guts, or being outsped by Darm, or Tang just sitting in front of it. Are not doing enough damage to the Volt Switch and a Kiss for Slowbro, it, it can't really come right now. Finally, it was a tough call, but the last one is going to be Vanillix not coming either. Yeah, changing weather is nice, but he has a few ice resists and I can't lock in or get enough power to do what I need to do, especially with threats like Darm, Excadrill, and Kiss barely outspeeding me. Yes, Arctivish is coming without Vanillix, but not to worry, so I'll be bringing my own hail with an Icy Rock to keep the pain going. Not sure if that's the play for item, but it's kind of neat tech. We've got speed for Zen Mode Darmanitan at plus 2, attack to Oko Gilith after Stealth Rock with Ficious Rend, and the rest in Special Attack 112, which lets me 2 hit KO Slowbro with Freeze Dry after Rocks. So it's cheeky fun set. Let's see maybe some more standard stuff with Kobalion, who's got the helmet, 
three attacks and toxic for something like Slowbro or Tangela or Kiss. It's relatively free unless Exca has the speed boost, just have to be careful with Conk's Guts as well. Speed for Darm, near max HP and HP, with just a little bit of an attack to ensure Oko uh, with CC on full health, 4 HP, Excadrill. That Fizz Duff could definitely come in handy. It means I can survive a couple of cheeky hits, like a Mock Punch, a little more easily, or maybe even a Darmanitan hit if it's locked into an Ice move, potentially, or something of that nature. Let's move on to Neo King then with Life Orb, three attacks, and rocks this time. I really only need the stab moves to run through his team, so I figured rocks worked here as Neo King forces so many switches. An Ice Beam is a more neutral option that can still hit the drill if he's got a Balloon or in front of a Kiss, who may want to mean an incoming Sludge Wave, things like that. Speed for Kiss, it's pretty straightforward. Tapu Bulu is here, obviously, to stop the Earthquake nonsense with a Choice Band. Wood Hammer actually does stupid damage, 40% plus to max HP Kiss, even good natural bulk with lots of HP and very little that can switch in. Stone Edge can hit Kiss harder, Toxic is another nice choice that also hits Tangle there. It's pretty good stuff, and we're going to move all right along to Latios. We've got a Choice Scarf here to outpace his whole squad, even a Scarf Darm before transformation, even with a modest nature. Draco hits everything but Kiss so hard, even Drill and the Pseudo Resist and Giggleth don't want to take two. Psychic hits just about as hard on more targets, and R Sphere hitting the Sand Core in particular. Trick is the last option. Pretty cool if he's going into a defensive Kiss or Tangler or Slowbro or Giggleth. It's just a cool tech option for some of those tankier threats that he may try to be, have in there for the Latias. And finally, my favorite set of the week, this is something I came up with as soon as I saw how physically offensive his team was. This is a fully physically defensive Zero Oro with Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Stab, Plasma Fist, and Knock Off. Oh man, his physical attacks are tough to deal with considering things like ground moves. But once I get a boost or two, I'm taking them comfortably well and healing up off of Excadrill, Darm, and Gigalith with Drain Punch, which also starts doing damage even with minimum investment thanks to Bulk Up. What about the special side? Tangela aside, Raikou and Togekiss are doing pretty much nothing to me. Slowbro isn't staying in on Plasma Fist, and Ranguru is just set up bait and a Drain Punch. That's kind of the idea of this, of this set then. Set up and go to town. Let's see if those strategies pan out. Let's see if I hold on to any strategy this time in the battle itself. Got them all right this time. Cool. Not sure what the full thought process was, but I remember Cobalion being great as a lead, probably against the Rock Setters and Drill and Gigalith. So let's just go with that. Good luck to Steve. Uh, so he's got an interesting lead. Slowbro is, yeah, interesting. Toxicing this right away seems nice, so let's just get to it. Nice. And it's Thunder Wave. I just can't keep this guy healthy I'm away from T Waves, away from random hits, can I? Not at all. It's probably fine. Uh, I still outspeed. We can get that damage gauge off for a little bit and switch. Now, I thought for quite a bit. About what to swap into. What is he going for here? I decided ultimately on an attack and move Future Sight or Scald I thought made a good amount of sense and that of all things to risk here I thought Latias made a good bit of sense. Reflect. That's interesting. And all, that also means that that toxic damage is going to start to stick now because he went past the 66% threshold so that's pretty good. Is he going to set up Light Screen too? Maybe he's going to be afraid of Thunderbolt. Well, it turns out he wasn't as I clicked Draco as an in-between coverage move, and he got Kiss in, which is not great. Well, I told myself Kiss was one of the best ways to zero or to set up, so let's just get into that. Into Gigalith. Mm, interesting double. They're weary of EQ. I decide this is a time probably for Tapu Bulu to come in, and instead of attacking, he's just going to set up his rocks. The League really has been doing a good job of getting rocks up on me, huh? That's fine. Let's see here. With Reflect, I'm not outcoing anything. Honestly, Toxic is probably the play. I wanted to scare Drill at least a little bit, though. So I decided on Horn Leech as an in-between option that could keep Bulu healthy without recoil, which obviously doesn't do much to something like Togekiss. And you know what this means, though. We're just going to go right back into Zero Aura. And we're only going to be taking 15% from Air Flash, and we were starting to get net gains in HP thanks to Terrain and Lefties. It is time. Bulk up on the swap to Slowbro. I know I use here. Reflect is wearing off soon. Still an odd switch considering the electric coverage I get, but, you know, that that's alright, I get it. Uh, knockoff can remove the light clay that I definitely know he has, as he does, in fact, this turn go for light screen, knowing that reflect is coming up. So, that's, that's not bad, honestly, considering that I'm already setting up here. Now, for a play. He may wish to get up reflect, right? I consider now, Platinum Fist does guaranteed KO here at plus one, thanks, even without the investment, just thanks to that bulk up. But what if he switches? Is is this enough? If he switches, I should bulk up again. But if he doesn't, let's go for it. I don't think I can afford Reflect to stay up. Plasma Fist. And he stayed in. We got the early KO. Okay. Kelder's in now. That's kind of interesting. 
Knockoff? Yeah, knockoff. He's got naturally high attack. We need the boost to get it out. Plus, if it's Guts Conk, let's see the Flame Orb. Yes, and Close Combat only does 35%. That's the power of Impish Zero Aura. Okay, idea again. Bulk up again. I didn't take that much before. Kiglith. Ooh, okay, this survives any hit I can dish out, and let's Drill Coming later. I understand the move. Uh, this wasn't, I think, a 2 hit KO with Drain Punch, though maybe if I had Punch. Well, here we are. Let's, let's remove the item, I suppose, and claim lefties in exchange for Toxic. Damn, again, maybe if I'd punched earlier? Let's do it now, and we can see that with the Drain Punch, only 55%. So no, this wasn't a 2 hit KO at plus 1. Doesn't look like I could have avoided this timer. I can at least heal up a good bit here with Drain Punch and the follow-up. He could try to stall at Toxic Abict, including a kiss into Drill Play, so let's prevent that with Plasma Fist. It's not like I'd be getting that much HP back anyway, so yeah. Um, EQ from dr the incoming Drill is going to be scary for sure. Plus 2 defense. We live! Oh, that was close. Shout out to Full Defense Impish. What a great call this ended up being. I, I definitely was considering getting speed in there for Darm or other things. Full physical defense was definitely the play. I started seeing some of the crazy numbers we get whenever we start bulking up, including Earthquake only doing 57% at plus two. That's, whew, thank goodness I didn't invest that speed. And now also Sand is gone. So let's just, let's just move on to the next KO then, shall we? Goodbye, Togekiss. Four KOs from Zero Aura, just ripping through the team. Conk makes a lot of sense here, of course, with Mock Punch. Looks like it does 9 to 10%. Yeah, that's definitely a shame. Don't know if I would have recovered that much from Drain Punch on Gigalith. Maybe not, but mm, that could have, could have been close there, potentially. So maybe that's influencing the play here a little bit. The guaranteed play here, to avoid Drain Punch in particular, is to do a little swapping. We're going to get just a little bit of Helmet Chip with Cobalion, and then sacking Zero Aura afterwards, two rocks, and we're just going to have Latias finish it off with Psychic. Because this thing doesn't have an item, it's not like not if Mach Punch would do all that much. Psychic will, of course, just cleanly take it out. And now, finally, with Darmanitan being the last one up, I finally make a misplay. I mean, sure, Draco into Kiss earlier could have been classified as a misplay. Maybe one or two other plays could have been better optimized, but... Okay, so how do I lose here? I didn't think that much about that this turn, apparently. Giving my brain time off means I only had the brain power for 20 whole turns. What am I worried about here? Scarf? He locks into something I can take. Earthquake doesn't hit. Fire move doesn't KO. Ice moves are by Cobalion and Arctivish. Fighting doesn't do anything. Band, not KOing all that much. Like, seriously, I pounded into my head early. This Darm's only real play is getting into Zen mode and popping a Salak Berry. That's the way I lose this game. The only way, so switching would be out of the question. Looking back on this is literally making me a little bit physically sick. I, I don't need to say too much. I could have still tried to play around here with getting two Rocky Helmet procs on it, but I didn't because I didn't know he got Fire Punch. Not that it matters, and... In the biggest throw I may have ever seen, we're going to go down again. one nothing. GG to Steve. Shame it came down to me throwing instead of outplaying one way or another. That is by far the worst part about this. It felt like a vintage Bouflant victory right until the end when I just threw it all away. I really, I kind of want to curl up in a ball. <laughs> I got my quilt cool pretty well in front of the guys afterwards, but damn, I suck. I suck. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's just move on to the next week. Zero Aura is the MVP, of course. Moves up to tied for first overall on the KO leaderboard in the league, actually. Latias probably MVP number two, though we won't be seeing it for very long. Yeah, we've made some trades that will be coming into effect week seven. I do feel good about the first 18 turns or so here. I think I did a good job turning my mind around after last game, but yeah, this stings. Because I turned a 5 or 4 0 into a 0 1, costing me tons of differential and an extremely valuable victory that all but knocks me out of contention for those coveted playoff buys. And we'll talk about our transactions next time, including a trade with my week six opponent right here as we take on our toughest match yet in these 6 0 Newport Noctiles coached by Elf Owls. We're going through our very own story arc here in real time. Let's see if we can complete our transformation by rocking it with a new team and going strong into the playoffs. See ya!